Hello, friends. Welcome to another episode of Impact Today. My name is Mark. This is my lovely wife, Victoria. We're so happy that you joined us. We are excited about what God has in store for you through this episode. Praise God. We want to encourage you to go to our website at globalimpactministries.com. There you can access all of these episodes. Uh, You can follow us on YouTube via podcast, and you can also send in your prayer requests and and give us your testimonies as well. Amen. Praise God. So we have an awesome message today about the reality of the new creation. Isn't that right, Victoria? Yes, the new creation in Christ Jesus. Praise God. Amen. I want to encourage you to grab your Bible so you can look up the scriptures and maybe a notebook so you can jot down some notes so you'll have them to go look at later on and really get the Word of God into your heart. You know, um, it's amazing because we sit here and we make these TV shows and they're aired on different channels at different times, right? And they're listened to at different times through the podcast even. Mm -hmm. And we hear testimonies from people who were healed while watching an episode that was made two years ago. Mm -hmm. And that's why we encourage you, go back. We have people contact us. I I binge watched 22 episodes today. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Yeah. Why? The Word of God, when it comes to you and you hear it, the faith of God rises in your heart and puts you into position to receive your miracle. And that's what we want for you today. We want you to receive your miracle today. So let's get right into the Word. Praise God. Well, Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Now, listen to what that says. My people. Mm. God is saying that His people are destroyed. Even though they belong to Him, a lack of knowledge opens the door for destruction to come into their lives. Yes. And so that's why we teach the Word on these programs so that knowledge fills your heart and mind so you can understand what's from God, what's from the devil, how to receive your miracle, so forth and so on. Yeah, you know, some people are of the mindset that no matter what happens to them, it was the will of God. Mm -hmm. But this scripture alone proves that to be false. Mm -hmm. If you get destroyed by something, It's not because God wanted you to be destroyed. That's right. It's because you didn't see and know something that's been provided to you. You know, we have a saying in America, ignorance is bliss. And I guess in certain situations, ignorance is bliss. Because sometimes you're better off not knowing (laughs) certain things, Mm -hmm. right? Being sheltered from certain things. But when it comes to the Word of God and the benefits, and everything that redemption, the blood of Jesus has purchased for you, ignorance is not bliss. Amen. Ignorance is destruction. That's right. Ignorance opens the door to sickness, poverty, the bondages of Satan. That's right. And ultimately destruction. You know, John 10.10 10 is often quoted, at least here in the United States. Let me, let me just... Uh, communicate what it says to you. It says that Jesus is talking and he says, the thief doesn't come except for to steal, kill, and destroy. Right. But I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Now, most people teach that saying, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Right. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. That's Jesus. Mm-hmm. He came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. But technically, if you look at the context of the of the chapter and what Jesus is talking there, it's really not the devil he's referring to. Right. It's the devil using people. People. That he's referring he's to. He's actually referring to false ministers. False ministers. That come to extort the people. That's right. Yeah. False ministers, false teaching, which, what does false teaching do? It, it, it teaches and communicates lies. Right. Deception, traditions. 
which keeps us bound in darkness and deception. And when you are deceived and you are ignorant of the truth of God's word, guess what happens? It opens the door for the devil to steal, kill, and destroy from that's your right. life. That's right. And so that's why we're coming to teach the word. Yeah. So that light can come in. Mm -hmm. Now, knowledge brings light into the darkness. Mm -hmm. And you know, the thing about darkness is no matter how dark it is, for how long, as soon as light come, that comes, that light dispels the darkness. Yeah, I remember uh, many years ago, uh, my parents took me to Mammoth Caves. Mm. It's in Kentucky. They're like the largest caves, at least in North America, the deepest, lar they're huge. Like you'd go on two or three hour tour through these caves. Yeah. That's how big they are. Well, in the beginning of one of the tours of one of the caves, they turn off the lights. There's lights in there and there's all these people. They turn off the lights and it's so dark. You can't even see your hand in front of your face. It's wow. that dark. Mm -hmm. But what happens? They just turn the switch on and all of a sudden you can see everything. Yes. And there are some people, they live in a cave spiritually. Of darkness. Of darkness. Yeah. But it doesn't matter how long it's how long they've lived in that darkness. All it takes is a little light and everything changes. That's right. In the natural. Yeah. Knowledge brings change, but actually it's not just knowledge. It's knowledge followed by action yeah. brings change. You know, you could have a situation and learn all about how to fix it, but never do anything. You're still going to stay stuck mm -hmm. in that situation. Um, for example, you could be in debt you could be struggling to make all your monthly minimum payments and you could be in debt. And so you start researching, how do I get out of debt? What can I do to get out of debt? And you learn all these things you can do, but if you don't implement them, yes. then you're just gonna stay in debt, right? But so in the natural, we have that knowledge brings change. I, I have a good example. A few months ago, I started noticing these little green worms. Uh, around my house outside on the sidewalk. Little green worms that I had never seen before. So what I do, the same thing everybody else does, you get out Google, what are these little green worms, right? And I saw they're army worms. If you see them around on your sidewalks, look in the grass, you'll see a lot more. And you know what I did? I looked through the grass. Lo and behold, there were hundreds of these army worms in my grass. So I researched further and discovered that these army worms literally will go across your lawn. They're called army worms because they're in a line, like troops. They will go across your lawn and eat the entire root system of your whole lawn and destroy your whole lawn in one day. Mm -hmm. If you just let them go. Mm -hmm. Talk about destruction. You know, if that happens, then you're back to dirt and having to plant grass seed. So uh, I remember you, we both, we started Googling, how do you get rid of army worms? And found, you know, several different methods. Mark went to the store <laughs> and it was funny because he walked in and there was a huge sign that they, they had put in the store that said, army worm you know, eradication this way <laughs> with yeah. an arrow because come to find out what was happening in my yard was happening literally in our whole town where yeah. we live. It was like something they said it happens like once every decade, mm -hmm. an infestation of army worms. So Mark went to the store. He followed the signs. You know, they had these, these signs pointing to the product on the count <laughs> on the, on the shelf and he bought what he needed and he came home and we treated the lawn and killed the army worms. Knowledge acted upon brings change. So this is a great example of obtaining knowledge, acting upon it, and it changing in the natural. Well, we all know, well, we should know, the natural realm 
is really just a reflection of the spiritual world. You know, the spiritual world and spiritual realities are actually more real than the physical world around us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The spiritual created the physical. And so the same, it works the same way in the spiritual realm. Yeah. And I want to talk about the most obvious example that, that we could possibly talk about. It's found in Romans 10. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about the new birth. When the spirit of a person is recreated into a brand new creation, old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. A human spirit is translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And really, Romans 10, starting in verse 8, tells us how to make this happen. You know, the catalyst that makes the new creation happen, mm -hmm. which, you know, the Bible says is the greatest miracle. You might be watching today and you need a miracle in your body. Well, if you haven't been born again, born of the spirit, recreated, you need a greater miracle. And that's what we're going to talk about. Amen. Amen. So Romans chapter 10, starting with verse 8, says this, But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. Wow, Praise there's God. a lot in those scriptures. Yes. But when you read it, you begin to see there's certain things that happen for a person to be saved, mm -hmm. for a person to be recreated in Christ Jesus, there's things that have to be seen and known and understood, and then there's action required. Yeah. That's why it doesn't make any sense to water baptize an infant and then say, oh, look, they're on their way to heaven. Right. Because an infant doesn't have the capacity to hear, mm -hmm. understand, receive, and confess. What are you saying, Sister Victoria? Are you saying that babies will go to hell? No. <laughs> I'm saying that you can't be born again unless you understand some things. So if a child is too young to understand these things and they die, they're going to go to heaven. Because mm -hmm. they're still innocent. That's yeah. right. And also, you know, you might have a 30-year-old that has the mental capacity of a two-year-old mm -hmm. because of a de developmental thing. Mm -hmm. They're innocent, yes, right? That's correct. Um, you ha there has to be understanding. So there are things that a person who has become a new creation in Christ, they have done. And we see them here in the verses that Mark just read. Um, number one, they have surrendered their life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Listen to that surrendered their life. You know, it's not just repeating a prayer. It's a heart posture. Mm -hmm. You understand um, bowing down of your heart to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Somebody could repeat a prayer, which if you haven't received Jesus Christ yet, and you want to make him the Lord of your life, we're going to pray with you and lead you in that. And we want you to pray it from your heart with all your heart. Mm -hmm. But saying a prayer like that and repeating a prayer and not praying it with your heart, Means it doesn't nothing. do anything. Whereas someone else could hear the gospel and not there's nobody there leading them in a prayer, but they fall down on their face and cry out, Jesus, you are Lord, save me. Yes. And they have a literal like born again experience mm -hmm. and become a new creation. And there wasn't even this repeat after me, like Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus. Jesus Christ appeared to him 
And, and he was like, who are you, Lord? What would you have me do? There it is, right? There was his salvation prayer. What would you have me to do? Yeah. Here I am at your service. I submit to your lordship. Yes. People who are truly born again have done this. That's right. I did it when I was seven years old. Mm -hmm. I prayed and made Jesus the Lord of my life. Mm -hmm. If you notice here, this individual, they have confessed with their mouth, like Victoria said, from their heart. There's a posture of submission to the Lord. They've confessed with their mouth that Jesus is Lord and they've believed in their heart that God has raised Jesus up from the dead. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's Amen. so important. The confession part. Yes. The saying part. It's not enough just to believe all the right things. You have to say it. Yeah. We didn't make it up. That's right. It's in the Bible. You have to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. Right? Yeah, I am again reminded of a story told by one of our mentors many years ago. When he was a traveling evangelist, he would go from church to church. And he's at this one church, and the pastor said to him, now, I need you to pray for this one man. We need help with this yes. one individual. This man, he comes to the altar, he's confessing his sins, he's repenting, he's repenting, he's repenting. And that's very important to repent of your sins. Oh, absolutely. But this guy was repenting of his sins, but he was receiving no assurance right. of his salvation. Do you know what we could do about that? And our, our, our mentor, he said, absolutely. He knew instantly what was going on in yeah, his spirit. Yeah, he said, I can help him. I can help him. Mm -hmm. And so sure enough, he even saw the guy. The guy would come to the altar. He repent of his sins, this, and you know, just keep asking God to forgive him. And, but he still had no assurance of his salvation. And one morning, it was a Saturday morning breakfast. I believe it might have been only men. It was a men's breakfast. Uh, the minister's asking for testimonies. And so this person stands up and gives a testimony, and this guy over here stands up and gives a testimony. And then the minister says to this particular man who had no assurance of salvation, Dear brother, why don't you stand up and give us a testimony about your salvation? And the guy was like, um, um, Well, actually, sir, I have no assurance of salvation. I'm not saved. Mm. And the minister said to him, Well, you do believe that Jesus is the Son of God, don't you? Oh, yeah, I believe that. You believe he died for our sins, according to the scriptures, right? Oh, yeah, I believe that. And you believe that God raised him from the dead for our justification? Yeah, I believe that. And then the minister read Romans chapter 10, verse 9 to him. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Yeah. For with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Yes. Stand up and confess your salvation right now. <laughs> and the guy kind of looked, he paused for a second and he was like, yeah. he got, he kind of, kind of like, yeah, that's right. He said, <laughs> well, you know, as a matter of fact, I do believe he, he died for my sins. He rose again for my justification. And I, I just take him as my Lord and I say, I'm saved right now and sat down kind of kind of a little like abruptly abruptly yeah. and a little shy about it mm -hmm. he was a little adamant and shy at the same time that no that doesn't make much sense but anyway he sat down and so that no one would be focused on that man and the minister quickly diverted everyone's attention to somebody else's testimony mm -hmm. hey you over here go ahead stand up and give us a testimony and while that person is testifying, the minister is looking at this guy over here to see what's happening. And all of a sudden, his face begins to glow. Yeah, he was beaming because in that moment, see, he acted upon the knowledge he already had. He yeah. already believed all the right things, but he acted upon it and he was born again. Yeah. And so when the minister looked back at him, 
he could see the effects of that. That's right. And he said, he went back to me, he said, hey, brother, I think you have another testimony for us. <laughs> and the man jumped to his feet and went, whoa! Hallelujah. I'm saved. That's right. See, what, ha what happened? Before he wasn't saved, mm -hmm. confession of the mouth leads to the experience of salvation. And healing. And healing. Anything you need. Let me real quick... Romans chapter 10, I want to read this to you out of a different translation. Romans 10, listen to what this says. In the Passion Translation, it says this, What is God's living message? It is the revelation of faith for salvation, which is the message that, that we preach. For if you publicly declare mm. with your mouth, that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will experience salvation. Wow. So you've got to publicly declare, Jesus is my Lord. Now, don't misunderstand what I'm saying here because maybe you're all by yourself. You could be all alone right now. You don't have to go outside in public and say, Jesus is my Lord to experience salvation right now. The point is you're, you're opening your mouth yes. and you're confessing and it's so real to you, you're never ashamed of Jesus Christ ever again. When it's like that, you are experiencing salvation. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for joining us today. We pray that our program has been a blessing to you so far, and we just want to take a moment to encourage you. You might be facing a dire situation. Perhaps you received a bad report from the doctor, or you're in the midst of a financial crisis, or a loved one was born with an incurable condition, or perhaps you've had a difficult time shaking an addiction that you've had for a while. Let us remind you what the Bible says. With God, all things are possible. With God, there is nothing impossible. All things are possible to him who believes, and there is nothing too difficult for God. So no matter what you're facing, we encourage you, stick with us, keep the switch of faith turned on, and get ready to receive your miracle. We're almost out of time, but we want to give you the opportunity. If you need to get right with God, if you don't have peace with God in your heart, then you need to receive Jesus yes. Christ as your Lord and Savior right now. And when you do, all your sins will be washed away. He will come live inside of you and make you a brand new creation. You will be brand new as if your past doesn't even exist, then you will be able to stand in the presence of God without any sense of guilt, without any sense of inferiority. Mark is going to lead you in that prayer right now. Say this after me with all of your heart. Pray it out loud. Close your eyes right where you're at and say this. Dear God in heaven. Dear God in heaven. I acknowledge. I acknowledge. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. But I believe. But I believe. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Is your son. Is your son. I believe. I believe. He died on the cross. He died on the cross. For my sins. For my sins. And you raised him from the dead. And you raised him from the dead. For my justification. For my justification. I repent of my sin. I repent of my sin. Forgive me of all my Forgive sins. Forgive me of all my sins. I believe. I believe. You did this for me. You did this for me. And therefore, and therefore, I confess with my mouth. I confess with my mouth. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is my Lord. Is my Lord. He is the Savior of the world. He is the Savior he of the world. He is the Son of God. He is the Son of God. And I accept Him right now. And I accept Him right now. And I thank you. You saved me. And I thank you. You saved me. Amen. Amen. If you need healing in your body, we're just going to pray right now and ask the Lord to touch you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for every person watching, and we ask you right now to stretch forth your hand and touch the people and heal the people now. We believe we receive your healing power 
into all of us now in Jesus' name. We command every sickness and every disease to go from the people now, and we receive your healing into our bodies right now in Jesus' name. If you just received Christ as your Lord and Savior, or you're experiencing a miracle in your body, we invite you to call the number on your screen. Or maybe you would like someone to pray with you about your healing and help you receive. On the phone right now, we have people waiting to answer your call. God bless you, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Self contains the power to produce what he proclaims. This message of the gospel has in it all the power necessary to heal you, to set you free, to deliver you from drugs, to deliver you from your sin. Inside this message of the gospel is the power of Almighty God. And as you believe it, say, yes, I take it as mine. Believe you did it for me. And when you believe it, and you say, I receive it as my own. When you partner with Global Impact Ministries, you are sowing into miracle festivals and pastors' conferences, resulting in multitudes being saved and healed, churches planted, and revival. You're sowing into the liberation of enslaved, persecuted Christians in the brick kilns of Asia. You're sowing into this broadcast, which is aired around the world, seeing many saved, healed, and encouraged, and so much more. Become a partner and sow your best seed today.